I'm Larry Seaman for a cooperation of Salem Community Television and uh, the Salem Learning Channel. And to my right is a special guest today. As a matter of fact, we're a guest of theirs. We're at the home of James A. Sayre, who uh, is a longtime resident in Salem and has been a uh, judge and an attorney for a, a number of years and perhaps you could uh, talk a little bit about those times. 55 years. 55 years as an attorney. I'm How old are you today? 98. How would you like me to refer you as? As Judge or Mr. Sayre or Jim? Or Jim. <laughs> Jim. I, I prefer. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I, I never particularly cared for the the judge or the title or whatever. Okay, now we were talking earlier before we started taping that uh, you were uh, born and raised in Havel? I was born so far on the street in Havel on, November, on December the 5th, 1911. The Amistice Day, November the 11th, 1918 came uh -huh. along. And my mother had a friend, uh, Mrs. Bowley, who worked in the Havel City Hall. Yeah. And she called up and said to my mother, you bring him down so he can see the parade for Amistice Day Parade. This is 1911, 14, okay. Okay, well, uh, the 11th of 1918. And so my mother brought me down and they sat me on the uh, old city hall windowsill and, uh, and I watched the... There was two... Uh, uh, <clears throat> doctors, one was, I don't know whether you remember, the doctor that weighed the soul back <clears throat> sometime in the 18th century. Well, he lived on, yes. on one corner, and Dr. Dunn, that the brick house is still there, the, that was on the other corner. Like if you, here's Main Street, and here's Fountain Street, that ran up in front of the Burnham School. The first corner that's gone now was a Dr. McDougall okay. in those days. And he's the one that tried to weigh the soul. Nice. I remember when, as a kid, when Dr. McDougall passed away and they had a big, big funeral in those days. I went to the Burnham School in Haverhill, grammar school on Fountain Street for two years and then transferred Cambridge, sometime around 1920, I believe it would be. And uh, I moved into Cambridge, and my father ran the Gordon Central Square Theater. It was a brand new theater at that time. We mentioned how you got to know uh, Louis B. Mayer. Who well, I, was a movie mogul. when I was born, Louis Mayer bought my mother a bassinet, opened a bank account for me, wow. and <laughs> I didn't know him, of course, very well. I was only about seven years old, but yeah, yeah. my father worked for him. Louis Mayer had theaters in Havel, because Louis was a Havel man, you know. Yeah. Went from Havel out to, to the West Coast. And, uh, the year I met him was uh, Louis Mayer came to Havel uh, on some form of business and he also wanted my father to go out to California and work for him. Mm. But my father uh, didn't want to go. <clears throat> the day I met Louis Mayer, he had come up to the swimming pool my father happened to be there that day and uh, introduced me to Mr. Mayor. I had gone to Houston, Texas to work at the racetrack, as I had said I was working, and uh, my father, the morning that I was all packed and ready to come home, my father sent me a, a telegram, said, go. Go to the coast, Louis will give you a job. And I didn't go, I came home. Uh, so you had your chance. 
But you did pretty good for yourself, still. I can't complain. <laughs> I've had a nice long life and uh, and the Lord has been very kind and very good to me and I'm very appreciative.